Hello, it is Tiffany of Clarity Confidence Courage. I am a women's life coach that helps divorced, empathic, heart-centered women move forward so they can build more confidence, build more clarity, and have a life that they truly love. Today, we're gonna to talk about what over-functioning is and why you need to stop doing it. Now, before we jump into this content, make sure you share, like, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time I drop a new video. All right. Now, before we get into what over-functioning is, let's talk about just the general term functioning. <laughs> functioning in a healthy way is just having the capacity to get done and go through with your natural daily roles. So if you're clearly an adult and you're adulting, you know, getting enough sleep at night, waking up in the morning, cooking yourself breakfast, going to work, you know, doing some of the responsibilities that you normally would do. And even if you have a family, yes, you're gonna be taking care of your family. These are normal functioning adult things that most people do. If you go to a job, you understand how to delegate, how to work with team, how to work independently. So it's just the normal day-to-day -day ideas, concepts around having the capacity to do daily living tasks that the average person would know how to do. That's, that's a description of what I would say, just an average healthy functioning adult. Now, over-functioning is when you take on way more tasks than you actually have the mental, physical, and emotional capabilities to handle. It's when you decide to take on a way heavier load and take away some of the responsibility from other people of them doing that job or getting whatever needs to be done, done. A lot of times when it comes to over-functioning, it's really an act of over-giving and over-doing. Over-functioning a lot of times involves other people in which you take the responsibility away from them. You don't give other people the opportunity to meet their own standards and to have a sense of accountability for themselves. So that is kind of the concept of overfunctioning. And as a result, well, we're gonna talk about that more and more detail, but as a result, all the work and all the load and all the burden is on you. That is what I mean when I'm talking about overfunctioning. Now, overfunctioning behavior can show up in a number of ways. The first way is to be extremely controlling. So if you're a control freak, then more than likely you fall under this umbrella of overfunctioning. A lot of times when it comes to control, this behavior is about controlling your environment to, to the extent where you don't want anyone else to do anything, you don't want anybody else to mess up anything, like you wanna have 100 complete control. Now, there's a difference between having control of yourself, like controlling yourself, having discipline. I'm not talking about that type of control, like a self-discipline self type of control. I mean controlling every single act of the other people in your environment. You have to control what they do. You have to control how you know work gets done at work. If you're on a project with other people, you wanna do all the work so that you can have control over the end result. I mean, we, we've met these people <laughs> and there's a difference between being a little bit of a control freak where it's like, ah, uh, you know, I really want the temperature this way. And you know, every now and again, I wanna make sure that the sheets are, you know, on the bed a certain way. Okay, that's, that's different but I'm talking about someone who has to be in control of everything 24 seven. And nine times out of 10 is because they don't trust anyone else to do it the way they're going to do it. In order for it to be done, quote, quote, right, they have to be in control. So that is one way, one behavior of over-functioning. over function can also show up as a fear of failure. And when I say a fear of failure, it's kind of like this perfectionism that takes over when it comes to overfunctioning at work and it and this fear of failure a lot of times again you don't want to delegate tasks to other people you want to do it all yourself because you don't believe that anyone can do it the right way which is the way that you would do it so you know this idea of fear of if i don't do it it won't get done or it won't get done right so i just have to take control and I have to do it so that there's no failure, so that it gets done right. So there's a fear of failure that's associated with the over-functioning behavior. And trust issues, that is another kind of way that over-functioning shows up. When you have a lot of trust issues, nine times out of 10 is because you've been severely disappointed in the past, 
And so now you over function every area of your life because you don't trust that anyone is going to take care of you because you, you, someone violated your trust years ago, you trust them to get something done or you trust them to take care of something and they didn't do it. And so that disappointment led you to having trust issues with people. And it probably was something that happened over and over again with someone that you trusted a lot, especially if you're divorced, it might've been your ex-husband. It might've been your intimate partner that they, they didn't do, they didn't come through, they didn't show up, they didn't keep their word. So now you don't trust anybody. Now it's like, oh, if I wanna get something done, I have to do it myself because I can't trust anyone to get it done because that person showed me that I cannot trust anyone. So a lot of times the overfunctioning will show up as a lack of trust in others. So why is it that sometimes people fall into these traps of overfunctioning? And if you are resonating with what I'm saying, then it might be you. Well, I hate to say this and I don't want to label everyone and generalize, but I'd say nine times out of 10, this did not just start as an adult. You've been over-functioning ever since childhood, from those years of zero to about seven, eight, and probably sometimes in adolescence. That's where the over-functioning can start to creep up. And the reason being is because there was some type of childhood trauma, whether that's a big T or a little T, that happened. So for example, neglect. When parents neglect children and children have to grow up figuring it out for themselves, they tend to fall in the overfunction category. You know, so if you grew up and both of your parents were workaholics and their career was like number one for them and you were always with a babysitter or a nanny or somebody was taking care of you other than them and you felt like, gosh, in order for me to get the attention, the soothing that I need, I have to give it to myself you're probably gonna be an overfunctioner because you're used to just doing it on your own. Your parents weren't there. Somebody else, you know, maybe babysitters, maybe these people that you didn't really have a connection to were kind of around, but you had to figure it out for yourself because no one was there to show you. So neglect, emotional neglect, definitely can make you an overfunctioner. The other type of neglect is physical neglect. So if you grew up homeless or there was food insecurity, you know, th there were money issues. So you really didn't know when you're going to have food, when you weren't going to have food, when you're going to have to have a place to stay, when you weren't going to have a place to stay. So again, that builds up those trust issues because the person in charge, the parent, the caregiver, the people who are supposed to take care of you, they didn't do a great job of it for whatever reason. So now you probably don't trust people a lot because there was a lot of insecurity physically when you were a child. And you may have had parents that actually loved you, that showed you they loved you by talking to you and spending time with you, but they couldn't provide a stable environment for you. And so you felt like as you grew up, okay, in order for me to have a roof over my head and have food on the table, I have to provide for myself. I had to probably had to get a job when you were at an early age, in high school, you had to work probably while you were, you know, coming home and helping, helping with the bills with your parent. You know, so it's it's kind of like when when a child is enmeshed in that in that adulthood at an early age, that is a form of neglect as well. Even if your parents were well-meaning, but they just weren't good at money, the bottom line is you had to grow up early. So nine times out of ten, you tend to overfunction as an adult. The other reason in childhood why somebody may overfunction is if you had a parent that was a narcissist or a drug addict or had some type of mental health issue, a lot of times you probably had to grow up early because all the attention, even if you came from a two parent household, all the attention is being given to that one parent that has the issues. They're the, they're the narcissist, they have the drug abuse. They, all the, the other parents' attention is being given to them. So again, you're being neglected emotionally, physically. You have to learn how to emotionally soothe yourself. You have to do things that most children don't have to do because it's the parent's job to have some type of, give you some a, 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 a stabil stability and a sense of security and emotional fulfillment and physical fulfillment. But when parents don't do that, especially at a really early age, you start to take on and go into survival mode and say, okay, I have to figure out how to do this for myself. I have to cook for myself. I have to clean for myself. I have to, I have to take care of my siblings. You know, when you have a parent that is a, a drug abuser or has some type of mental illness, 
a lot of times if there's younger children, you're probably the one that's gonna take care of them, especially if you're the oldest child. So all of that plays into what's called a parentified child, meaning at a very early age, you became a, a, a parent. You know, there was no parent for you. You had to parent yourself, you had to parent your siblings, you had to parent your parents. So a lot of times when you grow up like that, in that survival mode mentality, you tend to keep, you're over-functioning as a child, so of course you grow up as an over-functioning adult and you're trying to take care of everyone because in your mind you think that's normal. Or if you have a parent that's still hanging out in clubs and hanging out with their friends, and they're dropping you off at your grandparents' house, a lot of times you are going to over-function because the parent is behaving like the adolescent, like a child. So you are having, again, to soothe yourself, to do things for yourself, to pre pretty much grow up early and parent yourself. You can best believe you're gonna have trust issues, you're gonna have issues with control, you're gonna have issues delegating tasks, you're gonna have issues believing that people can show up for you because your parents, the people who gave birth to you, they didn't show up for you. They gave you life, but that was it, Th that was it. So yes, you will probably overfunction in adulthood. The thing that makes overfunctioning really bad is that even when you grow up and you meet people that are somewhat stable, you don't trust them. You don't trust anybody because in your mind, nobody can take care of you like you can take care of you because all your life you were, you've been in survival mode. You've had to take care of you. So it's very difficult to trust people when you, when you are overfunctioner. And the thing about that, if you're doing everything for yourself, you're not allowing anybody to help you, you're not allowing anybody to come in, after a while you will burn out. And things that should be simple will feel difficult for you. After a while, you'll be extremely tired. So you're like, I, why am I so tired? Why am I feeling depressed? Why am I just feeling like I need to sleep all the time? It's because you're over-functioning. You're, you're not allowing someone to help. You know, instead of getting a landscape, you're like, oh, I can, I can do it myself. I'll go mow my own lawn. I'll, Pay somebody to do that <laughs> instead of, you know, getting someone to help you around the house. If you have a big home and it needs to be cleaned every Saturday morning, pay someone to do it. Delegate parts of your life so that the, the main priorities, the top things that you need to use your brain and your body for, you can do that. You can work out. You can eat healthy. You can, you know, look after your children, spend quality time with them because you're delegating out these kind of secondary things. And you don't have to focus all your time and tension on those things. But yes, if you're an overfunctioner, you're going to burn out. The other thing about uh, other result with overfunctioning is you start to have a level of resentment. You know, you'll get to that point where you're like, why do I have to do everything? Why can't this person do this? And why is it that I'm always, but you're not taking in the ownership that part of the reason why they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, the people in your life, your coworkers, whoever it may be, is because you don't allow them to. You don't allow them to have responsibility. You don't give them kind of standards to meet. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're in a situation where, you know, you, th there is a deadline and this person has proven over and over and over again that they cannot meet the deadline, I get why you don't trust them. But instead of continuing to delegate work to that person, find someone else, find someone better. So you have to, you have to understand the difference between you know, this person isn't doing what they're supposed to be doing, so I can't trust anybody versus this person isn't doing what they're doing. Let me find someone better who can do the job. And so the other result of, you know, over-functioning is it, it stunts your growth because if you're trying to do everything for everybody, you wear yourself thin. And what will happen is that your personal goals will start to decrease you'll start to realize like, I'm volunteering, I'm helping this, this person out, I'm helping this family member, I'm staying up, getting to work early, staying late, I'm doing all these other things that are taking my time, my energy, my resources, and by the time I get home, I don't have any energy left to put towards my goals. So your personal growth starts to get affected when you are an over-functioner. So what are some things that you can do to help you stop over-functioning? Well, the first thing, like I talked about, is more than likely this stem from childhood. So you have to sit down and reflect and identify what triggers you. What is really triggering for you when it comes to the over-functioning? Is it when you have to rely on someone else? Is it when, you know, 
someone tries to come into your life, is it, are there certain things that actually trigger you to overfunction? Is it when you're given a task and you feel like the onus is on you to come up with a solution? Like what triggers your overfunctioning? Once you've understood what that trigger is, I want you to think back the first time you felt that way. Like when was the first time that you felt like you couldn't trust anyone? When was the first time that you felt a certain level of resentment because other people weren't carrying the load? You know, really think about the first time you were put in a position where something that really was important that didn't get done, it had a deep effect on you. For example, if you were a child and the water got cut off in your house or the lights got cut off because the bills weren't being paid by your parents, think about how that makes a child feel. It made you feel insecure. And because of that, now you feel like you have to work extra, extra hard so that your lights stay on and your bills get paid and no one can take care of you because your parents didn't do it. The people you should, you should have been able to trust. I'm just throwing out an example. That may not be what happened for you, but when you're able to pinpoint the reason why the trigger and then what started that trigger, now you've got something to work with. Now you're like, ah, oh, that's where it comes from. So that's step one. The next thing you're going to have to practice, and I know it's tough, you're going to have to start practicing delegation. Delegate some things, you know, and it can start small. Maybe you don't want anyone else paying your, your mortgage. I get it. But maybe start delegating small household tasks. Again, if you'd normally mow your lawn, hire a landscaper if you can. Just start small, allowing other people or organizations to do things for you and get accustomed to the feeling of having someone else take over the burden and the load. Feel what that feels like and slowly work your way up to more important things. And next, seek support. You know, seek therapy or coaching to help you understand how to delegate, how to slowly start to trust people, how to slowly start allowing yourself to get centered on what's best for you and being able to create boundaries and say no to things that you know are not going to benefit you. A part of the overfunctioning is also issues around boundaries. So having a coach to help you say, set some boundaries and then say, okay, this is, this is your boundary. And this is when you need to say no, because if you go over that boundary that you've set for yourself, you're going to start overfunctioning. It'll, it'll trigger you to go into that perfectionism. It has to be perfect. It has to be right over functioning mode. So get su support to coach you on how to stop giving into those triggers. And that'll also help you along the road to stop the over functioning. Now, I hope this video was helpful for you today with the idea that over functioning is just one component of some and a result of some of the trauma you probably face that you didn't even realize. And again, it could be a big trauma, but it can also be little trauma. It could be those little things that over time as a child accumulated and you realize like, wow, it's because of that. Now as an adult, I overfunction. And more than likely, if you overfunction in childhood, you overfunction in adolescence, you overfunction in your marriage. <laughs> you probably did. And you were doing way too much and getting way too little in return. So now that you're divorced, it's time to end the cycle. It's time to learn how to stop overfunctioning and how to allow people that you can trust to help you. So I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. If you want to don donate to the channel, I have a link below to donate to Clarity, Confidence, Courage, and make sure you share this channel with others. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.